Hi guys, it's Richard from Bagnall Kirkwood. So what we've got for you today is a reseal on the Virac HW100 cylinder. So this one's a carbine, it's exactly the same for the rifle version. Uh, what we've got is we've got our internal o-ring pack, and we've got some Molico grease. And of course the cylinder, as you can see here, completely empty. Customers complained, he says that it's got a very, very slow leak. He's had it in elsewhere to be repaired twice to the same place and they still didn't solve the leak so he's going to let us have a go at it so first thing i always do with these refill it and i like to try and find out where the leak's going so i'm just going to refill this up off our bottle i'll be back in a second so we'll fill the bottle up just put 180 or so in there and what we're going to do is we're going to run through the main areas of leak with our leak detector so we'll just put a towel down so we don't wreck the mat so this is the one i always use Roll call, um, but it's expensive. Basically, it's glorified soapy water. Got plenty of people that I know make up their own just for concentrated fairy liquid and a bit of water, and they'll just kind of pop it on the right places. But because of the amount of repairs we do, we go through uh, quite a lot of this stuff, so it's a lot easier and a lot handier just to have it. Uh, Going to go through it in order of likelihood of the leak. The fact this one's been in elsewhere, I'm expecting the easy places. To have already been checked but we'll just go through it as if it was a, a standard repair coming in so first of all i tend to put my hole hand over one side of the hole and just fill up the, a little bit there and just hold for a few seconds so basically here we're checking for the fill port and there's no new bubbles there they're just going away just going to make sure we dry that out so that's the most common place um, I suppose it could leak round this part of the cylinder and also around here. There's two O rings, I've never ever came across it, but it'll probably most likely leak through those two holes if that's the, that's the problem. I've never ever seen a leak in there. Uh, we'll just check it quickly though. And lo and behold, that looks like that's actually a small leak. Coming up, you can see the bubble it's starting to come. So that's a, a first for me. Just shows that it's well worth checking absolutely everywhere. So we know that we're going to have to change that one on the back. While we're on, we'll just check around the outside. That bit's actually fine. And we'll check around the outside on the other one. And we're also going to check the breather gauge for the pressure gauge, the breather hole. So that's just here. This is one that we're starting to see more and more leaks coming through as the, the guns get older and older. So I'm just going to pop a tiny little bit on there. And it's also leaking out of there. There's a little bubble came straight out. So do a quick rundown. I would say if it's leaking out of this area, sort that out. If it's leaking out of the, that breather hole on the gauge, don't bother doing it. Just wait until it leaks there before you actually start to service that part. It's a pain to get out, as you're going to see in this video. And the other bit, if it's leaking, at the, not leaking at the back here, I wouldn't bother serving this back part again. Actually, we forgot it can also leak through that main valve there. Again, I've only ever once had it leaking out here. Uh, but as we saw earlier, it's worthwhile checking everywhere. That's not leaking out there. <laughs> so, So, yeah, like I say... If it's not leaking from this side at all, I wouldn't bother taking this off because, as you're going to see, it's a bit of a pain. So, we're going to do a full strip down on this one anyway, just to show you what's in there and what to do. So, first of all, we're going to completely depressurise the cylinder. A few different ways you can do that. It comes with a depressurising tool originally. If you've got that in the box, you can just screw that on and it'll depressurise it. Put it on the rifle, and let it leak out. Uh, just wait for it to leak out. Uh, you can dry fire it, however you want. But we're going to use basically a depressurizing tool, and just make sure it's completely empty. So that's it there. Just leaking out. So, 
Well, that's just finishing. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to service this front area because this is what most people are going to be doing. That's where most of the, the leaks are coming from. Basically, we're going to put this into a vise. We're going to be careful not to clamp on any of the bridges. We're just going to clamp there, uh, across the middle there, just soft vise. And we're going to use a bar, correctly sized bar, through where you'll put the filler port. Usually these are on quite tight, so it is going to need a knock. Um, got another bar we could use as well. Just fits perfectly. I'm just going to have to hit it with a hammer just to shock that open. Just do that right now. We'll be back in a second. So that's that knocked off. And just unscrews. And under here, you're going to find the valve, the, basically the end of the cylinder itself. So you've got one O ring, big O ring on the outside here. We know that wasn't leaking, but we are going to replace it anyway. We've then got two holes. Middle one, this is going down to the pressure gauge. And this hole here with the uh, flat head opening, that's for the inlet valve. So we'll go into there and see. Already this one has been opened before, it's a little bit chewed. Um, what is important with these is to get, don't use sort of a standard screwdriver, use an oversized screwdriver if anything, something that's going to be flat, flat and take up all the slack in there. So we've got this massive screwdriver, um, which is very, very broad on the end. As you can see, it fits in there very, very nicely. So again, from factory, sometimes these are quite tight. So we're just going to nip that in the vise just to give it a bit of purchase. And then we're just going to unscrew that again back in a second. So there we go, that's sorted. Just going to unscrew there. And in here, what you're going to find, got the end cap. Then you're going to find a spring. Then you're going to find sort of a, a piston. Pop the back of that in there again. So just a piston. Sometimes what comes out on the end of there, it's an O ring that's got a brass retainer. And this one, just an O-ring. Uh, so whoever's had this apart before, they haven't... In fact, this is really flat, this one. Looks like instead of replacing the O-ring, they've just taken the brass retainer off. Um, luckily, we've got some more of them. So I'll go and get one from upstairs and then we'll explain it. So yeah, here's that little brass retainer. And what we'll do is we'll put the new O-rings on and we'll just explain how that goes. So we're going to take one new O-ring back. There should be five O-rings in there. And it's one of these two smallest ones. So that retainer sits in the middle of the O-ring. Just going to squish that down does just nip in there eventually it'll just kind of slot into place there we go so you can see the o-ring with that brass retainer and what happens is with age this o-ring becomes flatter and flatter if you can imagine it's on the edge of that piston and this is what's sealing off on this side this o-ring becomes flatter and flatter so at one point the brass is touching against the outside of the valve housing rather than the o-ring and that's the point it starts to leak one of the quick fixes which i think is what's happened here is somebody's just taken off that brass retainer, thrown it away and left the old o-ring in which was really quite flat and uh, worn so that would then seal back up against it but it's more of a, a quick fix rather than the proper solution Virac put that retainer in there just so that everything runs smoothly inside uh, while we're here we'll also replace that o-ring on the outside Oops, this one here just comes just use an old, old o ring pick and we'll just take it off the outside here. Yeah, this o ring looks like it has been replaced, whoever's had a go on it, uh, but we're just going to replace it anyway, just out of good, good practice. Uh, on this one, we are going to put a little bit of molly coat, the o ring grease as well. Just needs the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest bit. This one here on the piston, I like to put it on dry. 
so a tiny tiny bit of molly coat on that one uh, one thing that I have seen twice is people not putting the o-ring inside the groove they've put the o-ring all the way down here past these grooves and in this area here that's going to cause it probably to blow out just when you put it back on the cylinder and fill it up like I say I've seen that twice so just make sure you put it back into the o-ring groove not past the threads and we'll pop this back in so piston with that o-ring on the end let's drop that back in we're going to drop the spring back in and then we'll put the cap back on with this cap just make sure not to cross thread it if it doesn't want to go in all the way as well don't force it it means generally that that piston isn't lined up just take it out and put it back in again and on this one there's no way no reason for it to be anywhere near as tight as fire rack originally put them on just need to give it a nip a little nip there and that's it done sorted so if all it was doing the most common leak if all it was doing was just leaking out of that top lid there out of this um the fill port area where you would put your fill probe that's it stick it back together you're good to go uh, if it's leaking out of this top hole here the pressure gauge breather then that's this next step so if you look down there you'll see what looks like a brass hole with a uh, sort of allen key head on there this is what we're going to remove but we're not going to remove it using that allen key that goes into there it actually fits around the housing so it's much much bigger allen key than you think you would need so it only just slots through that hole and then when it's in what we're going to do is we're going to take the pressure gauge out the way we're going to take the pressure gauge out is we're going to come forward so basically this plastic cap here very very difficult to remove there's plenty of different people tried different things uh, some people say you put up a hose against this with an o-ring or something to hold it on give it a blast of air the problem with doing that is the cap flies off you can't get these plastic caps as a replacement so you're snooking um, and also what can quite happen often happen is the face of the gauge comes flying off and the needle comes flying off and all of that is only available as a unit which is quite expensive so the way i like to do it i've been doing it this way without any issues for a long time uh, pop that in there and then what you're going to be doing is you're going to screw this out so you're not screwing it the normal direction you're going to screw it clockwise because you want to go that way not towards yourself as you would when you're normally unscrewing something so this is quite tight so i'm just going to give it a little uh, bit of leverage in the vise again yes yeah, so that was just a little bit tight through age and um, what we're going to do is just going to screw very very slowly very very gently and you'll see there that you're forcing the gauge up against this cover and the cover just popped out a little bit i like to stop and take this off just so you don't risk doing any damage to the gauge that's it the covers came off there it's got no ring on here but this doesn't actually do any sealing at all not one piece of sealing that's just a friction fit to put that back in there so pop that to one side and then we're going to continue taking the gauge out just unscrews and that's the gauge out so be very very careful with this not a cheap piece to re replace and if it's leaking through that hole which is uh cylinder was there's the culprit this o-ring and in fact you can see this one here i don't know if you can quite see it it's got a crack in it so that's why it's been leaking through there and when we take it out it's very very square very very brittle so it has been in there from original i don't think anybody's ever replaced that and whoever's had a go at repairing the gun hasn't bothered doing that bit so we're going to take the replacement and we're just going to very very carefully i wouldn't put the gauge down against anything just very very carefully put that over the threads i'm going to actually use a little bit of molly coat grease on this one as well in fact uh, that's just the absolute tiniest amount one of those sachets lasts us absolutely months down in the workshop we're doing quite a few repairs so for the average uh, gunner that's going to last you many lifetimes 
So we're just going to carefully pop that over those threads and ease it down to the bottom there. There we go there, so that's in place there. What I can show you at this point actually is the hole that you could see from the top. So people when they're removing this, they're trying to put an Allen key into what they think is that small Allen key hole. But it's not, that's just circular, it won't actually gra grab onto anything. And what you're doing is you're putting the big one into the hole of this housing. So it's quite difficult to see the what you're doing from when it's inside of that housing itself. But that's it. Then we're going to pop this back into the gauge housing. So pop that on there. We're going to take the round key. And screw it back in. But again, so this time we're screwing anti-clockwise. To screw it back into the housing. And we're going to go tight. That's it. That should be it sealed there. And I'm going to put the cap back on. So I made this mistake a couple of times. Make sure you haven't got any uh, greasy fingerprints on this side. So give that a good wipe. Give that a good clean. And then we'll pop it back on. There we go. So that's clean. And I'm just going to pop that on. It's a little bit of plastic hanging off there. We'll clean that up before we do that. going to pop that on and then to pop it into place I kind of put it on like that and just give it a little push it's still not quite into place that's it so is it back on there okay so we're going to pop that back onto the cylinder again just screw it in Yeah, I don't think there's any reason why this has to be anywhere near as tight as it is from factory. But we're going to give it just a little bit with the bar, just to make sure. We'll pop the back of the house and bar it. Then, now we're going to look at this side where this one was leaking. I was very surprised to see it leaking. So this is the side that usually screws up against your rifle. Uh, what we're going to do is remove the end of it. So a number of ways you can remove this. This has actually been a part before, so I think somebody has had a go. Um, why we don't recommend doing this side, if you haven't got a leak out of that hole or this hole, is because quite often it's going to damage the damage this, put little marks on it, things like that. So I would avoid that. Um, it's a weird shape as people do specialist tools to get it off or we've got people that just put them in a vise get it across so we're just going to knock that off now so I'm just going to screw it out so much the same as the other side, but without the uh, the fill valve inlet. So again, so 11 mil, 10 mil, 11 mil span to get that off. Again, this is going to be tight in there, so we're just going to pop that in the vise quickly. There we go. So in this side again, cap just like the other side. Spring, much bigger spring this time, and you're going to get a piston. There's the piston, and this time the o rings came out on the end of it. And this one has got the brass thing still in it, so we'll just replace that o ring, we'll just pop that off. Taking off the brass piston, I tend to use a pick, just pull it off. Let's do that in a second. There we go, there. So we'll pop the new o-ring on. There we go. Again, like to put this one in dry, just also again make sure there's no debris or anything like that. It's very, very clean. Drop that one in. Drop that back in. The spring. And then the end cap.
And again, we'll just give that little nip up with that screwdriver again. Cool. So then we'll replace that O-ring that was probably the one that was causing the leak on this side. So again, just a small pick just to remove this outer body O-ring here. So I can see this one's very, very square. So again, this hasn't been uh, hasn't been replaced by whoever's had it in. See, lost a lot of its uh, flexibility, and it's very square. I bet if I probably just snap quite easily. Yep. So we'll put the new one on again. Just a little bit of molly coat. I'm just going to pop that round. Fits in there again. Just make sure there's no no crud or anything in the in the threads. And we'll pop that back on. So that's it done. Cylinder end is back on, all sorted. And what's left now? Just fill it up, give it a test. So you can fill it up. You can leave it overnight. You can leave it two days. Make sure it doesn't leak down. Um. No way of doing that, we'll generally fill it up, give it an hour, and then top it back up at 200 just to get rid of this heat. Because if you fill it up at 200, it will drop down 5 or 10 bar just because of the heat that's gone into it. But what we're going to do this time, we're just going to fill it up, and we're going to use leak detector. That way I can know whether the repair's solved straight away today, right now, and I can let the customer know. Yep, so we'll fill it up to 200 there. It's dropped down a little bit just with the heat already, and what we're going to do is just quickly... Check it with the leak detector. So just go through everything again. Exactly the same as before. Inlet valve absolutely fine. Uh, we'll check around the outside here. Absolutely fine. We'll check the hole wherever it's gone. There we go. Yep, hole is absolutely fine as well. And then we'll check the hole on the pressure gauge. This is one of the points where it was leaking. Then try not to get too much onto this hole because you don't want to go in inside and get moisture. Yeah. Yep, absolutely fine. That's not leaking. And then we'll also check those spots around the back where it was leaking. So let's do it completely around the outside. No, no bubbles though there. We're good. Check that in the valve quickly just a little bit. We're okay there. And we'll check that little hole on the side where it was leaking before. Yep, no more leaks there. So what we'll do now is we'll probably leave it on overnight test. Top it back up to 200 bar just before I go home tonight. Leave it on overnight. Make sure it's still 200 tomorrow. And then it'll that'll be the test to prove that it's completely solved. Um, so, as always, thank you for watching. Hopefully it's given you a bit of an insight and give a bit of confidence that you could solve your leaks yourself on these. As always, we'll put a link to the parts below. And we'll see what's coming in the workshop next. Hopefully we've got some decent videos coming up for you. Thank you.